Greetings, FlossTube. It is Friday, November 4th, 2016, 7.23 p.m. East Coast time here in lovely Sunderland, Massachusetts. This is actually my third time attempting to film this video. Uh, the last time I was in the middle of it, paused it because my husband called me. He's in Alabama for the football game against Troy University. And when I came back over here to sit down and restart the video, I hit the wrong button and I deleted what I had. So all you really missed was the unboxing of my lovelies from Picture This Plus. I hadn't gotten that far into discussing them, so I'll just start it all over. You know, I waited three and a half months for this beautiful fabric. I know there's a lot of there's a lot of people out there who don't necessarily care for how saturated the colors are in Picture This Plus fabric, but I think it depends for me on the piece that I'm doing and how dramatic I want to make it with my fabric choice. Sometimes I just like a plain, you know, like the wedding, like the wedding cross stitch that I did. It didn't need anything frou-frou-y. I was going to do it on Picture This Plus Heroic, and then I was like, no, it just needs something simple. So sometimes you don't want anything really flashy or bright colors or anything. And other times, you know, it's good to have a little flash and substance here. Um, a lot of these are, you can see I've got a varying degree of colors here, um, some pinks and some greens and some neutrals. Um, I was just trying to, I wanted to enhance my stash because I want starting into this year into the first of 2017 to just start stitching from my stash, which I kind of blew open because I placed an order yesterday from everything cross stitch, but more on that in a minute because it was an actual necessity. Well, only because I give gifts to people and a gifting opportunity came up yesterday that I found out about. So um, I initially, I guess it was back in 2014 when I was on vacation in Ocean City, Maryland with my in-laws and my husband, um, even found salty yarns. We, Bill and I, when we go to the boardwalk, we love to try to walk the boardwalk as far as we can. And we, we were up at 8th Street, which is where salty yarns is. And I looked over and I saw Salty Yarns, their sign, and it's like a little yarn ball and knitting needles. And I was like, wonder if they have any cross-stitch stuff. Well, yeah. <laughs> that is like the master of understatement right there, saying I wonder if, if uh, Salty Yarns has any cross-stitch stuff. Um, because they kind of remind me of what I could have experienced here had my local needle workshop ever merged with Webb's Yarn Store and not gone out of business because they do have a lot of fiber for knitters and crocheters but they also have a heck of a lot of cross stitch stuff and um, embroidery and needlepoint and so um, I remember I was just gonna buy some fabric and I bought my first piece of picture this plus which I believe was the solar colorway and I didn't even know anything until, but you know how I'll picture this plus has the little things on it and then it has the website on it. And I went to picture this plus website probably two or three months after I'd been to Ocean City and just fell in love. Um, I didn't really start, I had never even known about hand dyed fabrics before 2014. And really 2014 was when I got into using linen and even weaves in the first place. So I was really starting to branch out with my fabrics then. And I would say, I mean, I've already showed you my Garibaldi's and my hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie fabrics, um, which I love both of those um, vendors and I'm sure I'll buy more fabric from both of them in the future but picture this plus has pretty much been my go-to it's what i'm stitching nutty parade on it's what i stitched my niece's cross stitch on it's what i stitch what i'm stitching my um the 99 all the beer bottles the ale fabric which by the way if you're looking for a really good neutral fabric that's a nice light tan color ale is the way to go for whatever you're stitching but I just fell in love with all the colors. Um, I tend to be the kind of person who really loves jewel tones and bright colors, um, which is funny because I have a lot of muted stuff in my wardrobe. You wouldn't know to see me dressed to know that I love jewel tones. It depends on the shirt or the whatever, but, 
but I really enjoy Picture This Plus. Now, I did not know until this year that they have their Christmas in July sale. And I was like seeing dollar signs in my eyes, you know, perfect time for stash enhancement. Um, basically, I was like, oh my God, 25% off anything you buy that day. Yes. So I think the reason that, I, that it took me so long is because I ordered 10 pieces. I mean, they were probably, like I said in my last video, shoving my thing to the bottom of the pile. But at least this way now with this fabric and with the Garibaldi's and the hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie, I'm set for next year. I don't need to buy. I've got my patterns. I've got my fabric. So now all I'll need is maybe a random skein or two of DMC floss for something if I don't have it. And that's the way I want it to be. I want it to be where I can just sit down, kit something up and say, okay, let's do this. Um, so let's get down to it. Um, basically, I bought five fat quarters and five fat eights and I got a great deal. I mean, you can't, I mean, I think maybe, I mean, it would be great to just buy one or two pieces of fabric, you know, because if you buy a fat quarter, depending on the fabric you're buying, it can be 26 bucks for a piece of fabric. But I think in a way it's almost better if you're going to buy in bulk because then, I mean, like, I think I sat down and I looked at all my fabric and thought, well, this is going to be $200 worth of fabric for 150 That's great. And I mean, then I'm set and I don't have to spend, I mean, because you're going to spend the same amount of money whether you buy it piece by piece, project by project, or whether you just buy it all at once and then you have it. Um, so, or at least that's my, I can, my mind can, lately I have become extremely good about rationalizing things. I don't know. I don't know. I've become extraordinarily good at rationalization, which is kind of sad. Now, oh, and I meant to tell you that I found this interesting. I don't know how many other floss tubers knew this already, but somebody on the Stitch Mania page brought up, well, What's the difference between Belfast and Cashel fabric? And it never even occurred to me to think about that, but it sounded like a good question when I read it. Well, basically the difference is that it just it refers to the count. Belfast is 32, Cashel's 28. It's the Zweigart textile brand. They're 20, it's how they tell the difference between their 28 and their 32 count. Their Belfast is 32 and the Cashel's 28. And I thought that was such an interesting, because it would have never occurred to me to ask that question. So even after almost 25 years of stitching, I'm still learning a lot of things, which makes me happy. Now, this first piece, I actually know exactly what I'm going to stitch on this one, although I wouldn't have if I had gotten this two days ago, because um, I found out yesterday that my good friends who got married, who I did the, the wedding cross stitch for, they're expecting their first child in May. And I'm so excited for them. They're, they're going to be wonderful parents. And Diane's 36. And I mean, they've been together like six or seven years now. Um, so it wasn't like they just got, they just met, got married and got pregnant. You know, they've been together a long time and they always, you know, they both come from bigger families and they both wanted two or three children. So, you know, Diane's 36. It's time to have kids if you want to have more than one, especially. So I figured as soon as, because it was funny because she had texted me and she said, you know, we're not putting this up on social media. We're just telling our close friends right now. And I was like, oh my God, are you telling me what I think you're telling me? You're pregnant, aren't you? And, and then she sent this cute little announcement picture. And I was, and my next thought immediately was, well, if she has a little girl, she's going to name her Joy because that's her deceased sister's name. And her sister died in a really tragic accident when they were kids. She, they were climbing trees and they were near a telephone wire and she got electrocuted. And I think she would either be 33 or 34 now. She was the middle child. And then um, Diane's brother, I think is like 30 or 31. And so I just knew, okay, well, this little girl's, if she's having a girl, it's going to be, you know, she's going to be named Joy. And she is. Her name's going to be Cecilia Joy. Cecilia was Diane's maternal grandmother, I think she said. 
and then of course Joy being her sister. So what was the first thing I did? Well, it's like, okay, I got to do a baby cross stitch because there was a time, I guess about seven or eight years ago was kind of toward the end of it. But there was a time when a lot of our coaches were young, starting families, and I was doing a lot of cross stitch in the mid 2000s. Like, yeah, especially around like 2006 and 2007. Um, you know, little, the stamped baby bib kits and, um, things like that. And, you know, and then I had done a, a blanket for my niece and nephew too. So there was a time when I was doing a lot of baby cross stitch. And then of course, you know, you reach an age where your friends are, have had their kids because now most of my friends have, you know, are either my age or older and they've got kids who are in their early teens. But so I knew I wanted to do something a bit unconventional. Um, I didn't want it to be pink. I mean, come on. Just because you're having a little girl doesn't mean it has to be pink. Um, and I wanted to do something that was going to kind of put my stamp on, on a birth announcement. And I was at everything cross stitch because I looked at uh, one, two, three stitch and everything was just too pink and too frou frou -y. And then I looked at everything cross stitch. And then I hit the jackpot. There is a cute, cute pattern. I'll show it in my next video of um, dragons. And it's an X's and O's pattern, which if I remember correctly, that's Jennifer Aiken Smith. It might not be her pattern, but it looks a, lot, a heck of a lot like the dragon she, if it's not hers, it looked a heck of a lot like the dragon she designed back in the day, um, which I've stitched a couple of her dragons. Um, and I just, I adore dragons. I have loved dragons since I was in third grade. And I just thought, well, this can put my unique spin on it. It's a little welcome. It's, it's a welcome where you put the baby's name underneath. And then there's a little ba baby dragon hatching out of an egg in the, in the center of the O. And then there's like a dragon knitting and there's a dragon with the bottle. And you know, it's just really, really cute. So I wanted to do something unconventional. And this is the fabric, if it's big enough. I think it should be. I may not be able to because this is, well, it's 32 count though. So I'll have to, this is the fabric that I think I'm going to do it on. We'll put it that way because it all depends on the size of the pattern. But it's very hard to see because it's really, really pale. Let's see if I can show you with, yeah, this one, the pale fabrics are never going to show up on my webcam, but this is a very... I would call this color, if it were, if it were something I was dying, uh, I would call it Sprite because it's that lemon lime color. It's a very, very, very pale yellow and the green is very pale and it's like lemon lime. It really, I would call it Sprite. The, the, they named it Gossamer, which is a great name for it because it's very pale, but it's like the background color is like very pale yellow, which you would use for a child if you were trying to go for a unisex color for a baby. Actually, both colors, really, because I've seen green used if you're not into the pink and blue thing, which I'm not. So if this piece of fabric is big enough, that this is what I'm going to stitch that on. But it is 32 count Belfast, which is redundant now, I know, but so anyway. This is what I, I hope I could use for the little dragon birth announcement. But I can get that all stitched up and ready to go and then just put her weight and her length in next May 9th. Or thereabouts, roundabouts, whenever she decides to make her appearance. Now my next one, I'm not really sure that I bought this one with any particular project planned, but I'm sure that I will have something I can do on it at some point. I'm thinking this would be a great fabric for like a silhouette type pattern or um, like a, just a, a, like a one color pattern, a monochrome. Yeah, that would be the word I'm looking for. Or like one of the silhouette patterns. This is called Mesa and it's a very pretty kind of, Well, like it reminds me of the Adobe house that McKenna stitched that's in the um, Bad Neighborhood, I think it is, collection. 
the one that's on the Indian graveyard or whatever it is, the one that I made the comment about, that's why you don't build a house over a graveyard. Um, it kind of reminds me of like that Adobe, like Southwest United States kind of mud brick kind of color because it's, it's like a, I would say it's like an orangey peach. It's not really, it's not really bright orange, but it is kind of like a peachy orange, kind of like an adobe color or something. It's really pretty though. I mean, it's a very saturated piece of fabric. It's not like some of them that have just a little bit of the swirls in it. It's a very colorful, saturated piece of fabric. I really like this. I think that would be nice to do a silhouette type pattern on. I think I just bought it because I like the color. Which is probably not necessarily a reason to spend money on a fabric if you don't know what you're going to use it for. But, yeah. Fabric is crack for me, folks. I, I can't help it. I, You know? I know that I just watched Joe's video where she talks about being a notebook addict, and I am, I am too. But this, but being addicted to colorful fabric is the same reason I'm addicted to fountain pen ink. And why I have more ink that I could probably ever use in my lifetime. Okay, now this one is a piece of 28 count, the Cashel, and it's a fat eighth, 13 by 18, and it's called Serene, and it's a very pretty pale mint green. There's no additional colors to it. It is just a very pale mint green. Um, it would be, and this is one that I would consider a neutral. To me, I know that most color artists today would say neutrals are like browns or beige or off-white, stuff like that, but to me, a neutral is just like one pale color. Um, and I know that's probably completely wrong. I know color theorists would probably say, you don't know what the heck you're talking about. But in my estimation, if it's a nice pale, solid color, then it can be pretty neutral. Because you could stitch, this is a very pale mint green, and you could stitch like any number of colors on it. I would think you could do a Christmas piece on it. Um, I think bright reds and emerald greens would look really good on it. You could do a nature scene, um, something with birds. You know, I, and I think that a piece of fabric like this lends itself to a lot of different uses. So that's why I consider it neutral, even though it is a green, um, because it's very, very pale. And there's not much in the way of any darker swirls like there are with some of them. So technically not a neutral, but, you know. Now, let's see. Oh, all these colors. Now this, now you see a trend with all my color fabric choices being like purple and green and stuff. This is a 28 count fat quarter of jade. And this is the shade of like the, the shade of green that I love best. It's like, um, it's not like a dark, like emerald green would be, but it's not nearly as pale as the piece I just showed you. Um, and I love how when they dyed this, it got the swirlies in it. I love, I don't know if you can see the streaks and all in it, but I love the little swirlies. If the rooster that I was going to do for the county fair next year didn't have so darn much green in it, I would have stitched it on this, but there's just way too much green, you know, for it to be contrasting. This one, I think I will use if I do a Christmas piece. I might even use half of this to do my dad's Christmas. Actually, I think that's what I'm going to do. This is a fat quarter, and I was going to do, I'm going to do the Christmas story clouds factory pattern for my dad because he is like the most obsessed Christmas story fan I know. And so I think this is a perfect Christmas color. So I think I'm just going to use go habsies on it and do the um, do the uh, the Christmas story one on that for him because I think I mean Cloud's factory patterns stitch up rather quickly the smaller ones and I think I want to get that done for him for Father's Day. I just love that I'm going to stitch the leg lamp. 
I'm going to stitch the leg lamp. It was a, it's a major award, you know. For those of you who haven't seen the movie, if you live elsewhere or other outside the United States, I mean, if you've lived in the United States for the past 40 years and you haven't seen that at Christmas, you've been living under a rock. But for our friends in, in uh, places other than the U.S., I think my dad loves it because it makes him nostalgic for Christmases when he was a kid because it takes place like in the early 50s or the late 40s, early 50s. And my dad will be 70 this year. So, you know, I mean, I think it just, it, and I think it's just, he appreciates the humor in it in a way that, I mean, I like the movie, but I don't know. But then again, I watch White Christmas every year and sing along and cry at the end every single year like I've been doing for the past 17 years. When my parents gave us our first DVR, DVD player back in 2000, one of the movies she gave us was White Christmas. And this year, and this year, like every other, right before we go home for the holidays, I'll be watching White Christmas. So I can't say anything because I have a Christmas movie tradition. It's just not Christmas story. Now this one, I'm thinking if the colors work out, I have um, Lindy Stitches. I mean, it's awesome. I can't wait to stitch it. And I'm going to have to do a floss toss to see if it'll work with this fabric. But I bought her Emily Dickinson as my homegirl pattern because she is. She's my favorite poet. Like I said in one early video, this summer we finally got around to touring our house. I got to read my favorite poem of hers out loud right sitting across the hall from where she wrote it nearly cried, you know, totally geeked out in a major way. So this is the fabric I'm going to use if the colors match. If not, I'll just have to do a floss toss on something else. But this is 32 counts, so that makes it Belfast. Um, da Vinci. And I got a fat quarter of it. And it's pink and purple, but it's not the kind of pink that I don't like. <laughs> and, you know, I'm sounding really bad here, but I don't like pinky pink. But it's got like, I don't know how to describe it, but like that country pink or the colonial pink, like the mauve, like it's kind of purple. It's got purplish undertones to it. But this is um, mostly purple, but then the swirls in it are like a mauve or a antique pink. I don't know how you'd describe it, but it's not like pinky pink. So I think I'm going to do the Emily Dickinson one on this one if... The floss toss proves that the, the colors will be a good match. So I'm going to write on here on the tag what I plan to use these for. So that I remember because, I'm, you know, I'm not going to go back and watch my, my video. And then let's see, the serene is going to be the baby, baby dragons. Well, it's not baby dragon. Well, it is. There is a baby dragon in there coming out of the shell, but then it's like the grown-up dragon's taking care of the baby. It's absolutely adorable. I'll have to show it to you when I... And then let's see. Emily Dickinson, maybe. But yeah, that was so awesome to finally tour her house. Now, the homestead in Amherst is... It's, it's the actual homestead, but it's the building's not in the same place where it was when she lived there. I mean, it's not far from where she actually lived, but when you're there, you're not actually experiencing Amherst as she did because the house wasn't exactly there. But getting to read my favorite poem of hers, which is Hope is the Thing with Feathers that Perches in the Soul. And I absolutely love that my framers took that as the name for their shop. Now, this next piece is a 28 count. And I got a fat quarter of this. This is called Chalice. And honestly, it reminds me of like a marshmallow brown. I know it's coming across as yellow on my screen. Let me see if I can. But it's really kind of, it reminds me like of a toasted marshmallow. Which I think there again is a nice neutral color because it's not bright. And the fabric is very saturated with the one color. There's not any swirlies of any other colors in this. And don't get me wrong, I like the swirlies, but this is another one I would classify as a neutral. So I could stitch any number of things on this. I'm, I'm not sure what. I mean, I might even stitch my, 
is I got the Clouds Factory uh, Russia pattern, Russian pattern, the large Russian icons pattern. So I might even use I might even use this for that because it's a very neutral, but it's like a marshmallowy kind of kind of yellowish brown. But that to to put it that way, it sounds like it's not very pretty, but it is nice. It's it's a nice neutral. So I think I'm going to do the Russian icons on that one for myself. So I probably won't get around to doing this one for a while. Oh, and I'm going to stitch on the Old Glory sampler on Election Day. It's the only way I'm going to keep my sanity. I'll be so glad when it's over and people stop telling me how to think and what to how to vote and what to do. And I'm so sick of all that bullshit. I don't like anybody who's running, but, you know, I'm not going to vote third party now because my personal beliefs don't jive with Jill Stein and after Gary Johnson's what's Aleppo bullshit there's no way I'm voting for him either but I have to vote because as a woman I feel like it's my civic duty women haven't even had the right to vote in this country for a hundred years yet so I feel like I have to and I feel like I have to vote for all the women in the world who aren't even allowed to I'd be a hypocrite to consider myself concerned with women's issues and then not vote but maybe Mickey Mouse would be a good president Although somebody on my Twitter feed, one of the sports writers I follow, posted, if Theo Epstein ran for president, would he win? I was like, hell, I'd vote for him. <laughs> I mean, he did wonders with the Red Sox, and now he's won a World Series with the Cubs. Actually, I wish he, he was involved with football and not baseball, because UMass could use him, but hell yeah. I'd vote for Theo Epstein. He's a UMass grad. He's got a good head on his shoulders. He can turn around shit baseball teams and make them good and bring them to the World Series. First time in 86 years for the Sox and then the first time in 108 for the Cubs. Yeah, I'd vote for him. So this next piece is actually a piece of Lugana that I got a fat quarter of. And I just love the feel of Lugana. It's so sturdy and, and nice. It's, you know, the same stuff that I'm stitching Leilani on and it just feels feels nice. This is the colorway called Jazz. And it's kind of a pale bluish green and purple. See, I'm nothing if not predictable, right? So anybody right now who wanted to start their own hand-dyed fabric company, as long as you did purple and green, you could sign me up right now because that seems to be my go-to. But the thing about this is that it's not, it's kind of trends more towards blue. I would say it's more of a pale blue than green. And it's got little touches of purple. It's not, you can see the little bits of swirls of the purple. It's not an overly saturated purple piece like some I've, I've I, well, like the next one I'm going to show you. It's just enough. And I think this would actually be nice to do a nature scene on. Not entirely sure what I'm going to use this one for, but that's half the fun. Now this one is a bit darker than most fabrics I use, but I really liked just the swirls in it <laughs> from what I saw online. This is a 28 count and it's a hat, it's a fat quarter of the Cashel 28 count, which is redundant, but okay. And it's called Heather and it's actually a grayish purple. I love how dramatic that looks. This would actually be a cool piece for all you Halloween stitchers out there who didn't want to use like black or something real dark, like especially if you don't see if you don't see on dark fabrics as well. This one, if I had McKenna's little oh what was it? The 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 one that she's doing of uh, the skeleton. The, de the not dead bones. That's no, that's not right. Pepe, I need your help. Darn, I can't think of, but it's the one she's stitching of the, the coffin and the skeleton. If I had that pattern, I would definitely stitch it on this. Because this reminds me of Halloween. And actually it just reminds me of the time of year when the nights get when the nights get longer and the days get shorter because it's very dusky. It's honestly like a grayish purple. But the way they dyed it with the swirls in it, I would totally, when I'm, whatever I end up stitching on this, I'm going to try to make sure that I get this part of it in here 
this part right through here in the piece. And now, of course, the thing that kind of upsets me is that most of the real cool part of the fabric of the die is on like your your allowance because you know you would leave at least that much that much fabric for the framing and a couple of inches in there so the best part of the die is on the side you would leave to cut off to get it framed but maybe if I stitched on it if I stitched with like you know, used my little three inches down, three inches in, and then started over here. I could get a lot of that in there, in the in the cross stitch, because that is really too pretty to waste on, you know, an, an allowance for framing. But I could probably make it work if I start, because sometimes I start my cross stitches, you know, three inches down and three inches in. I just wish this. Not that I'm trying to be critical, but I just wish all of this was more in the center because this is really, really cool looking. That's really pretty. And it seems like the best part of the die is up at the top. But hey, you can't control how a piece of fabric dies once you put it in the die and, and you do it. So not knocking them. I'm not trying to be critical. I just, I just wish that that part of the fabric. But... If I stitched something Halloween-y or something on this and I just used a small piece of it, I wouldn't mat it because it would cover up all this cool, delicious swirlies in the fabric. And I think in this fabric, it, it more than some of the others, the little swirly bits give it its character. But yeah, if you want a piece of fabric for Halloween or, th or something, something fall-oriented, this would be the one to use. I love that color. It's like a dusky purplish gray. Very pretty. So I'll share those last. Now this one would be great for like an under the sea, marine life, ocean. This would even be cool for a mermaid. I could see using this colorway for any of the Mirabilia mermaids that weren't the green ones. This one is called Tempest and it's 32 count. I put another piece of my Belfast. I only got a fat eighth of it, but this is sweet. It's blue and green, and it makes me think of the ocean. This would be a perfect fabric for any kind of nautical theme, um, any kind of like if you were doing the fish patterns I've seen that people are doing, the coral, the coral reef fish thing that someone's doing on Stitch Mania. This is perfect for that kind of thing. Now, I have to say my favorite part of this fabric, and I know not everyone goes for the big blocks of color, but it's actually prettier on the other side. I love this bluish green here, but really this part, now see this is what I was saying about the other fabric. I wish it had the swirlies more in the middle. This one has it all in the middle there, and it's that blue and green. It's like a deep, like almost like a navy blue, a little bit of olive green, and then a shade darker than like a mint green. But this would be perfect for any nautical theme. Now, we come to the part where I actually made a boo-boo. But my loss is going to be somewhat my uh, loss is going to be somewhat on here's gain because I didn't mean to order two pieces of the same fabric. But I did. I hit the wrong button. I guess I was so excited to be ordering all this stuff that I hit the wrong button. So, what I plan to do is, today is the 4th, so I would like to open up a giveaway for this one spare piece of fabric that I've got here. Um, I plan to do it like I did with the needle minders, although this time it's just one piece. One piece of fabric, so one winner. What I want to do is I want to leave this open until December 4th to give people a chance to find the video, watch it, leave a comment if they'd like the piece of fabric. And um, then, of course, going from the bottom up with the comments, I will use a random number generator because that keeps it fair, you know. This time there will only be one piece of fabric, so there will only be one winner. Um, but after, on the 4th, I should hopefully have recovered my brain enough after the Hawaii trip to be able to do a video and announce a winner. Um, so without any further ado, this last piece of fabric that I bought two pieces of, it's a piece of 32 count, 
It's a fat eighth, and it's a colorway called Carnival. Now, it's very peachy pink. It's very pale. It's another one that I would call, well, I wouldn't exactly call this one a neutral because there are swirls in it of the peachy, the peachy pink color. Um, it's kind of an orangey pink or a peach. And you know how, like, when you look at a fresh peach, it's got a little bit of that dark pink around the top? That's kind of what it has in here. In this part of the fabric, there's like a dusty kind of peachy pink, and the rest of it is a little bit more orange than that. Um, so I wouldn't exactly consider this one a neutral because you can definitely see more than one color in it. But it's a very, very nice light color. Um, I think if you were doing a sampler maybe, some kind of sampler, um, maybe a primitive piece that used like more muted colors. Um, I don't even remember why I bought this, but I ended up accidentally hitting the button twice. So if you would like a chance to win this piece of fabric, um, oh, and also, where's what? Oh. And also, if you win, I'm going to throw in my umpteenth New Yorker tote bag. Every time, every year when I renew my New Yorker subscription, they send me another tote bag, which is great. But I've got tote bags coming out of my ears. And in fact, my last one I got like this, I've got as a project bag that I keep in my car, just on the off chance I need something to stitch while I'm waiting for something. So if you would like this, this peachy pink piece of fabric from Picture This Plus and the tote bag, just leave a comment between now and December 4th. Um, you know, I'll ship anywhere. I don't care. Postage to Europe and beyond is not that big a deal. I send packages to friends in, in uh, Amsterdam all the time. And not cheap, but hey, you're only doing it every so often, right? So I don't care about the international postage thing. So anyone, anywhere in the world, if you'd like a shot at it, just leave me a comment. Um, and like I said, I will go from the bottom up when using the number generator because that's the only real way to keep it fair. Um, and I'll pick a random number and on December 4th, I'll let you know who won and I'll have you email me your address and I will ship it to you for Christmas. So your loss, my loss is your gain on that one. So hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble about my fabric and my latest uh, project that I'm going to stash away. Now that I have gotten this stash, now that I've gotten this stash accumulated, I'm set for a good long while. And I'm very thrilled that now all I have to do is go through and possibly just buy a few DMC threads here and there. And thanks for listening to me ramble. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I enjoyed going through it with you and planning and plotting all my uh, future projects. I think at this point I have to live to be at least 329 and a half years old. So if anyone out there finds the Fountain of Youth, let me know. And I'll, I'll let you know if I find it. I'll share. You're only supposed to have to drink out of it once, right? And you're set. So yeah, if I find it, I will let you know. Uh, so anyway, all you lovely ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are doing well and that your stitching is going well. And for those of you who aren't, you got my love and good vibes coming your way. And until next time, I wish you happy stitching and a happy life. See you later.